to welcome you to this Wednesday evening service of First Baptist Church in Loosedale, Mississippi. This is another one of our online services. Presently, we're only having church on Sunday morning. We have three services on Sunday morning. We would love to have you attend one of our services. We have a worship service at 8.30. We have a worship service at 9.45. We also have a worship service at 11 o'clock. And while we're having the 945 worship service, we also have Sunday school. We would like you to afford yourself of the opportunity to attend one of our services. We would love to meet you and have you worship with us. Tonight, I would like, to, I'd like us to pay attention to the 34th Psalm. I'm going to begin by reading uh, the first seven verses, and then I'm going to pay attention to one verse. We're going to give special attention to that verse. This is a Psalm of David. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David sounds joyful and here is why. He said in verse four, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. So I want to begin tonight by focusing on verse 6. Verse 6 makes one simple statement out of which David really shares the rest of the psalm. This is his experience. He said, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. So what do we have here as we read these verses, especially this one? First, we have a personal testimony. This is what David said about himself. He said, this man, me. Later he says, I sought the Lord. He's not ashamed to identify with God. Isn't it true that a man who might be ashamed to identify with the Lord in a time of ease is often ready to identify with him in a time of crisis or need? So this is a personal testimony. Do you have a story of how God delivered you? David told his story here in the book of Psalms. We're reading it. That testimony continues to give glory to God. Is it time that you begin to tell yours? Is that what God is telling you tonight? So first, this is David's personal testimony. Second, this is a testimony of poverty. It's a testimony of need. David said, this poor man, a man who never has a need, or at least never realizes and recognizes his need, never has a need for God. So this is David's testimony in his need, in his poverty, at a time when he recognizes that he has a keen awareness of a great need for God. So I would like to ask you, is there a poverty in your life, some pressing need that is out of your power to meet? Do you stand in help that you see no way of receiving? a need in your life beyond that which mortal man can meet. This was David's poverty. He had nowhere, nowhere to turn. He was destitute and desperate. Is that where you are as you listen tonight? So first, this is David's personal testimony. Second, it is a testimony of poverty. And third, this is a testimony of brokenness. David said, this poor man cried. Were there tears on his face? We don't know, but obviously there were tears in his heart. Is that what is causing you to perhaps listen more intently to this devotional tonight than you usually do? Do you bear some burden of brokenness? You find yourself not only needy, 
but overwhelmed in the face of your need, helplessly poor, as needy as you have ever been, then you can join David in giving a testimony of brokenness. You are the poor person who cries. You will notice that he didn't say this poor man prayed, but we know that from reading this psalm that this is also forth a testimony of prayer. He said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard. In times of need, uh, there are moments when we can scarce find the words for prayer, but God hears the wordless cries of the soul. God listens to the hearts of his children. He hears your heart tonight as you stand in the poverty of some personal need. So this is David's testimony. It's a testimony of poverty. It's a testimony of brokenness. It's a testimony of prayer. Notice the way this poor man prayed. It says he cried. This is what J. Sidlow Baxter says about David's cry in the little devotional book, Awake My Heart. He says, a cry expresses intensity. It is short but urgent. A cry is verbal simplicity. Nobody has to go to school to learn how to cry. Babies don't go to school to learn how to cry. A cry indicates bitterness. It is the language of pain. Cries are not set to music. A cry is a voice of need. And if it really comes from the depths, that cry will come again and again and again until it is heard. If you don't know the words to pray, just cry like this poor man cried, and the Lord will hear you. So this is David's personal testimony. It is the testimony of poverty. It is the testimony of brokenness. It is the testimony of prayer. Fifth, it is the testimony of pity. David said, the Lord heard. I want to ask you a question. Is it a good mom who shuts the door to the cry of an infant and goes outside in the yard where she can't hear that cry? There's no pity in that mother, is there? But there is pity here because you see as you read this psalm that God listened. He heard. He didn't, he didn't shut out the ears of the cry of this poor man, and neither will God shut his ears to your cry. There is mercy here. There is pity here. The Bible says, as a father pitieth his children, even so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Sixth, this is the testimony of power. David said, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him. There is no weakness in God. God is able. God does more than just hear. God answers and God delivers. Our God saves. So here we have David's personal testimony. It is the testimony of poverty. It is the testimony of brokenness. It is a testimony of prayer. It is a testimony of pity, but it's also a testimony of power, of God's power, which because of that, it also makes it a testimony of plenty because David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. You see, God didn't work halfway in David's life, and God won't, won't work halfway in your life. God did everything that needed to be done. He saved him out of all his troubles. Now, I don't know the difference between being saved in trouble and out of trouble, but if God is going to save me in it, I hope he also saves me out of it, don't you? What a testimony we have in this one verse. Can you give such a testimony? Maybe not. Well, then why? You may be in trouble, but not out of it. You may be poor and needy and helpless because of it. You may be broken by it. It may be personal to you, just as David's trouble was personal to him, but you may not know what to do. Look, 
David didn't know what to do either. There was nothing he could do. All he could do was cry. And if that's all that you can do, then cry. Let God hear your heart. That's all David could do, and God did the rest. And may he do the same for you. David said in this psalm, going back to verse 4, he said, I sought the Lord. The Hebrew word that's translated sought originally meant to tread out grain or to beat a path. It came to mean to seek out. We use that same expression, really. You know, sometimes we'll say, I beat a path in his direction. It means essentially there was no way to get there. It was so important to get there that I cut a path through the bush and the briars to get there. I was desperate. David beat a path to God. Is that what you need to do tonight? Are you facing desperate times or a desperate situation? David said, I beat a path to the Lord's door. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He knocked, God heard, and God answered. Is God listening to you tonight? Are you knocking? What prompted David to beat a path to God? Look at the last part of verse four. David talked about his fears. Fear will prompt you to do many things. Often it will prompt you to do the wrong thing. But David's fear prompted him to cry out to the Lord, to seek the Lord. You know, I know for a fact that we all have fears. It doesn't matter how big a man is or how mature a man is. He still has fears in his life. I know I do. Some of those things that we are afraid about are, are events far down the road, some unsettling uncertainty in our future. But there are also fears that are here and now, the real right now fear that is overwhelming and suffocating. So what should you do if you have fears like that in your life? David said, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Can God deliver you? Can he deliver you from the problem that you face? Can he deliver you from the fear that that problem has brought into your life, the fear that hangs like a dark cloud over your mind and heart? Have you prayed the simple prayer? God, help me. Just cry out, God, help me. If you try calling out to God, God just may have a plan to deliver you. It worked for David. By the way, David did have other options, as you know, in trouble. He had the, the sword of Goliath in his possession. He could have tried fighting his way out of trouble. He was an experienced soldier by this time, but instead of fighting, instead of acting out of his strength, he recognized his absolute weakness and his utter poverty in the face of his problems. He was helpless and he cried out to God. So maybe you tuned in tonight and you're feeling helpless, hopeless, poor and needy. Can a poor and needy person cry out to God for help? David said, this poor man cried. He called out to God for help and what happened? Finally, I want you to see, this is not only the testimony of poverty and of brokenness and of prayer and of pity and of power and of plenty, it's the testimony of a presence. David said, he saved me out of all my troubles. And David had a sack full of troubles by that time, but he experienced God's help. And looking back, David was convinced that his deliverance was a supernatural deliverance. You know what he said in this Psalm in verse seven? He said, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. He rescues them. Who is the angel of the Lord? Well, I told you before, you need to remember that every time the angel of the Lord appears in the Old Testament, he is always more than an angel. It turns out to be some kind of appearance of the Lord himself. The New Living Translation reads here, the angel of the, Lord, of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. So who does, whose life does God guard? He guards your life if you're looking to him. He is guarding your life if you're crying out to him. God has a plan to rescue you and deliver you. Do you need God to pull you out of something tonight? 
Do what David did. Beat a path to his door. Cry out to him for help. He will hear you. He will place his presence around you and he will deliver you from all your troubles. Further down in the Psalm, getting down to verse 15 and also verse 17 are two of the most precious verses in Psalm 34. It's really a precious Psalm. Verse 15 says, the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Also, you'll notice in verses 17 and 18, it says, the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And then it says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted tonight as you listen? The Lord is very near to you. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Tonight, I invite you to cry out to the Lord in your trouble. Perhaps soon, you too, like David, will have a personal testimony of the Lord's deliverance. May God answer you as you call. Thank you so much for listening.